Moonlight Buttress is one of the most iconic climbs in Zion National Park in Utah. The route is up a series of cracks in the rock that in some places is just big enough to get your fingertips in and in other places it's as wide as a chimney where you can press your feet against one side and your back against the other. The route is 1100 feet of vertical climbing on sandstone which is broken down into nine rope lengths which are called pitches. My climbing partner Bay and I are doing a combination of free climbing which means we're just using our hands and feet to ascend with a rope that's just there for safety and it's not assisting us. And then on the harder pitches we're also aid climbing which means we're putting nuts and camming devices into the cracks in the rock to attach a small fabric ladder to that piece to aid our upward movement. The person who's belaying removes all the gear as they follow up behind. Bay and I planned on taking two days to reach the top, sleeping on a hanging ledge halfway up. This is a training session for a bigger climb that we have planned to climb the nose on El Cap in Yosemite, which is three times as high. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can follow the journey. Watch on now to see if the weather forecast of 50% chance of rain stifles our plans. So as we go down, we get to ride in Dr. Pig every time. And if we have to walk seven miles out of the park at the end after missing the final shuttle bus. It's the day before Moonlight Buttress and we're out at a grocery store. We've got all of our gear strung up in a tree behind me here. We're sorting out what we're gonna take and what we're gonna leave behind. I found the food that I took on that last trip was really good. I had rice and I had tuna last time, salmon today and some corn. Funny thing is last time I realized when I got up there that I didn't have a spoon with me so I had to use the top of the cornlet. This time I've got a spoon. We got this from the local pretentious cafe. It's 5.20 in the morning. I'm packing up my sleeping bag. I've got the rack here, the waist harness and the chest harness. I don't think we're short on climbing gear. Doing the final preparations and packing of the haul bag. It's late March here now and the shuttle buses have started running every day. It's a Thursday morning and we're aiming to get that first shuttle bus that leaves at seven o'clock. There's a 50% chance of rain tonight and the rock here is really soft. If it rains, it can't continue. It's not just a unpleasant feeling for us, it's actually really poor etiquette. And it's, it's against the rules to climb in the, in the rain and 24 hours after the rain. If it does start raining, then we'll just have to bail and come down and come back another time. Okay, we're getting ready for pitch one. It's eight o'clock. It's a bit later than we we're hoping to get started, but with that first shuttle bus starting at seven, this is the earliest that we can get out here. I'm gonna take the first pitch and then Bay's gonna take the second and we'll swing leads from there. So for our equipment, we've got a haul bag by Ran Out Customs. This is their medium sized bag. Bay's got his small Creek 20 by a black diamond. And then we're trailing the portal edge behind us. In terms of rope, we've got a 70 meter dynamic rope and then we've got a 200 foot, which is 60 meters, semi-static rope for hauling. Bay's taking climbing shoes and a chalk bag. He's gonna lead some of the easier pitches free. I'm just taking my approach shoes. I'm gonna climb what I can, but aid climb mostly. Radio check. Check, check, check. Pitch one, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I think when you're aid climbing, bay, mm -hmm. anything, like trees are on, anything goes. <laughs> yeah. When you're free climbing, you're like, oh no, that tree's not on. Don't touch the tree. I think when you're aid climbing, <laughs> Bay's jugging up the line and I'm hauling up the bags. It's gonna be cloudy today, all day. Chance of rain tonight. At least it's not too hot and sunny. Top of pitch one, Bay's rigging up. He's gonna free climb pitch two. It's a 10C, 130 feet. It's a nice finger crack. Bay made really short work of that second pitch free climbing. He's about to start hauling. I'm going to release the haul bag. I've got to move now. Bay's hauling up the pig. And when you're following, it's always a race. You either want to beat the pig up, or if it looks like terrain where it might get stuck, you want to be there right beside it so you can tend to it. You don't want to be last up way behind the pig. Get in that high step.
This is the money pitch, pitch four, because there's this really nice splitter crack going up 180 feet. Amazing place to be. Look at that crack. I'm at the top of pitch four and I'm just starting to build the anchor now. Bay, lines fixed. The pulley that we're using here is the Rock Exotica Omni Block 1.1. That one refers to the size of the sheave inside. They do, they have them in various different sizes. The reason we use that pulley instead of a different one is you can see here I've set this all up and I've realized that my pulley is going through the rope here. And I don't want that because then when I pull it comes up and it gets all caught up on itself. So what I want to do is either remove this black line or remove this from the inside. Now removing the black line is difficult because I've already called out the bay down below the black is fixed so we can't take it off. But what I can do is, we're still holding on black on the micro traction here. I can take this Rock Exotica Omni Block and open it one step, two steps, and it's open all the way. And I can take my pull on cord out, feed it through here, so the whole thing is outside the system now. And then I can feed it back through and lock that. And now that's ready to haul and it's not going to bind up on itself because the rope's going through. It's now going to feed a lot more smoothly. At the end of this video I'll put a link to the method that I use for this haul. This is the Mark Udon method and in this other video I'll show you all the equipment that I use and why we use what we do and how to set up this two to one haul. I want to take a break from hauling top of pitch four here to show you guys the line. This was a super nice layback finger crack. It was 180 feet in length and it was just sustained vertical, a little bit overhanging at the end. Bay jugging up now and I'm hauling the pig and this is a really nice crack. I better keep hauling, otherwise Bay's going to beat the pig up here. This is Bay setting off on pitch five. I want to mention the harness that I'm using today. This is the Misty Mountain Titan. And I've been in this hanging belay now for an hour and a half and it still feels comfortable just hanging in this. <laughs> I got this one custom made. I chose the colors, green and gold, which are a heritage to my Australian background. And the inside, I got a leopard print. And the idea behind this is when I'm up there and I'm feeling scared, I look down my harness, looking at what gear I've got, and I catch a glimpse of the leopard, and I think, yep, yeah, that's it. I've got to channel my inner leopard and keep moving up. Anyway, this is a super comfortable harness. Last time I was in a hanging belay, I was sore. It was digging into me. I had chafing, and it was really uncomfortable after a lot less than an hour and a half. So, Misty Mountain, you guys are getting the thumbs up for this harness. He's moving at a really good pace, but... By the time I get up to the top after jugging the line and then getting all set up and it'll be time to set up the port ledge, I'll probably be getting dark. I wanted to come back to you guys with a quick update. So after one and a half hours on the hanging belay, I said that the harness felt fine. Well, it's now been just over two and a half hours and I wouldn't say it feels fine. It's <laughs> getting uncomfortable. Now, I wouldn't expect it to be comfortable after hanging for two and a half hours, but just want to let you guys know, it's not all fine and dandy. You can't sit around this thing all day. But still, two and a half hours and I'm getting uncomfortable. Good job. Bay's hauling the pig. And I'm taking down the anchor. Check out this crack. Just cutting straight up there. That was a tough pitch. Well led. Thank you, sir. 
It took me an hour and a half. Those purple link cams, game changer. The entire last from outside the roof to here. Yeah. I just alternated those. Welcome to the ledge, my guy. They say this is a sleeping ledge for one. It doesn't look very flat. We're setting up the portal ledge here. This is the top of pitch five. It's crazy how long everything takes when you're climbing a big wall. It's 11.30 at night and we're just about to start cooking our dinner now. The highest chance of rain tonight was at 11.30 and it's not raining right now, so hopefully it stays that way. On the menu tonight, we've got rice, salmon and corn. Okay, we're going to cook this up and then get some sleep. So, the big thing that we've got to work out for tomorrow is the last van out of here is at 7pm. Now, we don't have to get on that, but if we don't get on that, we have to hike back out to our van, which is at the visitor parking center at the park entrance. And that's like seven miles. You really don't want to have to hike seven miles. So, we've got to finish by 7 p.m. Now, we caught the first van this morning at 7 a.m. It's now 11.30 at night. We're five pitches up. We've got four pitches left to go. So, it's going to be an early start tomorrow. It's cold and windy up on the ledge. I've got every layer. I've, got, I've even still wearing my helmet, even though I'm not going to fall off and no one's above us, so nothing's going to fall down. I'm just hoping that that extra layer of foam on my head is going to keep me warm. Last night, a real thick fog came through. This morning, it feels like we're waking up in a cloud. We're at the top of pitch five. This is where we camped overnight. So far we've come up 630 feet and we've got 380 to go. And this morning this deep fog rolled in and we're considering bailing because you, we shouldn't climb here in the wet. So I've been wanting to do this climb since I started climbing. Um, so like six years ago or so. Um, when Ben asked me, I got super excited and I was like, drop my plans, like cancel going to girlfriend's brother's wedding for this. Super stoked. But at the end of the day, this is a training trip for Yosemite, which is a better climb, more classic. A route that we can be on in the wet. So if it does rain on that trip, it's okay. And like Ben was saying, this is not us. It's not our climb. This is a you know world-renowned route. And so I feel, I'm obviously bummed that we go down, but I'm also like, I understand as an outdoors person, that it's okay. That like, this is not gonna go anywhere. And if I break something here, that's, that's gonna stay forever as well, so. Sad, sad, but understand. When it's wet, it, it degrades a lot faster when you're climbing on it than if it's dry. And so there's a lot of rules about not climbing in the rain. And also, not just the rules, but we don't want to be bad custodians of the climb and damage it. There are spots down there where people have been putting cams in and you can see the erosion from where people have, everyone's just put the same size cam in there over and over. And that is compounded if the rock is wet and we don't want to be the ones that destroy a world-class climb like this. The biggest perk about going down is I've only eaten Snicker bars, Lara bars, and my Annie's gummies. So my body just has like a great lump of fiber pressing through my colon. If we go down earlier, I could poop in a potty, which is exciting. But um, we spent the time while we were packing up the portal ledge to kind of work out what's going on and check to see what the morning brings and it really looks like the sun's coming out the skies are clearing and we don't think it's going to rain so we're going to press on hopefully we can get to the top final bus today is 7 p.m keep moving About to be a really pretty day. Yeah. I'm glad we didn't bail. Yeah, me too.
this pitch is the same size crack the whole way up. I'm using my black, yellow, and blue totem cans. This is a perfect spot for a nut. Oh, that one there. Oh, you could tow the mountain away with that one. That's my anchor. A nice little ledge to stand on. How do you make a chocolate peanut butter sandwich when you're belaying for a tiny ledge on pitch seven on Moonlight Buttress? Well, first of all, you've got your climber on belay with a grigri. You've got your cache loop, so if the grigri fails, it's backed up with the cache knot there. And then you can get into a deep swinging seated position. So you're hanging off your harness and then you put your tortilla bread on your leg and that's your table then. Delicious. We almost bailed from the top of pitch five this morning. It snowed a little bit overnight and then a little bit this morning just as we were starting to get ready. Uh, it was just small flurries and we had a good feel and look at the rock and made sure it was completely dry before we set off and so glad we didn't bail, we're almost at the top now. But he's just finished pitch 8 which was 8 and now he's about to set off on pitch 9 which he's doing free. It's uh, 10B and then we should be at the top really soon. I'm loving the climb, it's such an amazing line, particularly the top two thirds, just super cracks. And it's also turned out to be a really nice day. All that fog we had this morning, it's completely cleared now and it's blue skies and just a few white puffy clouds around. Perfect day for climbing. It's cool when you're sitting still, but uh, when you're moving it's a good temperature for when you're climbing. But I'll tell you what, I'm certainly looking forward to some pizza tonight. Okay, here's the top. Bay's already on the summit. Let's go and check out what the view's like. It's only 4.45 in the afternoon. Last van's at 7. So here he is. Let it go. There he is. Woo! Ha! Nice climb. Yeah, yeah. First big wall, man. We started climbing yesterday at 8.45 in the morning and we finished today at 4.45 in the afternoon. So that's a total of 32 hours on the wall. How nice is it after two days on the wall to be able to take out the stuff from our whole bag and just throw it on the ground and not have to clip it to something and worry that it's gonna fall off the edge. On the summit after 32 hours on the wall. Yeah, it's a good go feeling. It's awesome, so good. <laughs> Time for pizza. The descent shares the trail with the Angels Landing Path which is one of the most popular hikes in the country. So it's a really well-formed trail. And going down all these switchbacks really puts into perspective how high we climbed. Now we spent a fair bit of time up on the summit, messing around, taking pictures, sorting out our gear. We're in a rush now. We're down on the canyon floor, but we've still got a fair way to walk to get to the bridge to cross the river where the bus will pick us up. Two more buses behind you, you made it by about 15 minutes at the max. <laughs> but like, if, if we went faster, we couldn't sleep on the lead. Literally the fun stops as soon as you get to the top. So like, yeah, like 2200 feet of sport climbing is fun. 1400 feet of sport climbing is great. But like, there is no story to that climb. This, I have a story now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, there's something about a climbing that's so satisfying and scary at the same time. Yeah. This is my favorite. This is such a pretty canyon. 